pick up our study of crystallography with Roman numeral 3 under our major heading of crystal forms. In today's lecture, we're going to go through all the different form names that you could potentially see. And we'll draw most of these. The textbook has images, and the images are really good. Okay, so I don't feel, I don't know about the plagiarism rules, and so I'm not going to just put all those figures here. Instead, we'll just draw the ones we can, and I point you to the textbook on pages, what was it, 134 to 142, just as a reminder, at places where we can see great pictures of these different forms. There are a total of 48 forms that could occur, and we are going to look at 15 of them. 15 of most common is where we're going to go in today's lecture. There are, remember, open forms and closed forms, and so we'll first start with the open forms that you need to be able to know and recognize. The most simplest open form is called a pedion. A pedion is nothing more than a single face. The next type is two parallel faces. This is called a pinacoid. A pinacoid is two parallel faces. If we were to draw a pedion as a single face, maybe we'd draw something like this. Right? And if we were to draw, uh, and we can always have like imaginary axes, right, creating three dimensionality for us. But if so, if those were our axes like we've dealt before, then a pinacoid would be something like this, where you have two faces that are parallel to one another. They must be combined with another, both of these must be combined with other faces in order to create a crystal. If we were looking at this example from earlier, oh, we can look at any of these crystals here. But in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six faces. Well, we haven't learned that name yet. But this single face right here, that's a pedion. Or let's look at these examples. Here we have this one in green, and we know there's one here at the bottom. They're parallel to one another. There's only two of them. That's a pinacoid. In this example, C and C here on the bottom, that's another pinacoid. There's other names that we can learn, though, right? What about this one with their angled pointing up? What about this one where there's six faces? Well, sure, there are names for that. They're also open forms. And we'll get to them in just a second. Their third one we need to learn is a dome. A dome is... And actually, there's another name here called sphenoid. So dome and sphenoid are very similar to one another. These are two intersecting faces. Two intersecting faces about some symmetry element. It can either be a mirror or it can be an A2. And the sphenoid is the one that's related about a mirror, and the dome is the type that is related about an A2. They both look very similar. What you would see for them, so here's a good example. So here's one face. It's kind of tilted at an angle. And then you could have a second face. Could have done this in green, perhaps. But maybe you'll get the idea, right? We're kind of making a tent shape. So there's face A, and then here dotted, there's face, I'll just draw it in, face B. And they're related to one another. They intersect here at this point and along that whole edge. This is a dome or a sphenoid, depending on what that symmetry element is. The next open form to consider is one that we've seen a lot of. It is called a prism. That aquamarine above was a hexagonal prism, but prisms don't have to have six faces. Anytime that you have between 3 and 12 parallel... Oh, I spelled that terribly. Parallel faces. They're also going to be parallel to a crystal axis. So they also parallel... So this symbol right here... That's a symbol for parallel. You can write it in or just use that symbology. So parallel to a crystal axis. If we were to, let's just draw one here real quick. 
we'll, we won't do the hexagonal one. We've drawn the hexagonal prism so many different times. Let's instead draw a tetragonal prism. So it's four-sided. Okay, it's four-sided. This front face, side face, back face, and right side face. That would be an example of a, let's see, we have the c-axis going like this, right? So you can see that all four faces are parallel to the c-axis. This, those faces would all be combined together to be called a prism. We could call that a tetragonal prism because it has four sides. They don't have to, right? A three-sided, this is called a trigonal. That's a common name. Tetragonal, uh, hexagonal would be six, you get it. And there's other names for the other ones. But those are the three most common that we deal with in this class. Number five is a pyramid. This is when those faces intersect. So anytime you have three to, f three to 12 faces that meet at a point, meet at a point, it's called a prism. And either they do meet at that point or they would project to meet at that point. So we'll say or would if extended. That's what a pyramid would look like. So let's just, uh, here's an example of a pyramid. Maybe a triangular pyramid. And that sound effect helps me draw. Here we can see the front face, a back side left, and a back side right. They all intersect at this point. They're parallel to the C-axis. That is a pyramid. And then the last of the um, open forms is called the bipyramid. These are two pyramids that are reflected by a mirror reflected by a mirror plane. Okay, what would that look like? Well, here's our triangular one that we just drew on the left-hand side of the page. We could do the same thing downwards. Anyways, that's a bipyramid. They reflect that's not even close. That's a bad drawing. It's a bad drawing, students. Scratch it. Don't be mad at me. I lost track of my three-dimensionality. One, two, three. And then it would just be... Yeah, that's a little better. Not much, though, huh? Okay, then there's closed forms. We'll finish off this lecture with closed forms. Closed forms reflect higher symmetry. That's the most important point here. So in our triclinic system, you only see pedions and pinacoids. Maybe a dome. I don't even know. You can't see a dome because it, by definition, has an A2 or a mirror. So these are things you see in triclinic and in monoclinic and orthorhombic. By the time you get to prisms and pyramids, we're probably dealing with hexagonal and tetragonal crystal system. And by the time you're at, at closed forms, these are only the higher symmetry, okay, my pen's glitching out here, higher symmetry systems. You can't see these in the lower ones. So it's only going to be in the isometric system, in the hexagonal system, and in the tetragonal system. You do not find these in any of the lower systems at all. The textbook shows these closed forms on figure 6.36, which is on page 141. I can't draw all of these. Some of them become too complex to do. So I want you to go there right now and then either pause the, this message as you're flipping to that and look at those forms, or as soon as we're done writing out this list, I need you to go there so you can see what these look like. We're going to go through nine of these forms. One, scalenohedron. 
their names have hints as to what they look like. So the scalenohedron, hedron means shape, and it encompasses space, and it's made of scalene triangles. Go back to like ninth grade geometry class to figure out what a scalene triangle is if you do not know it off the top of your head. Second is a rhombohedron. We spent a lot of time with rhombohedrons in lecture and in lab. And this is a shape where there are ROMs that are offset from one another. Right? Calcite breaks into rhombohedrons. Number three is a disphenoid. Disphenoid is a weird shape. It has four faces. You're going to have to go look at a picture of it. A cube. Well, you know what that is, right? There are six faces. Fifth shape, octahedron. It has eight triangular faces. So this is eight squares. Disphenoid is four triangles. Octahedron is eight triangles. I'm just trying to break down the shape a little bit there for you. Uh, the sixth shape we need to worry about is a dodecahedron. dodecahedron. This is 12 faces and they are ROMs. This is how garnet crystallizes, for example. Number seven, tetrahexahedron. But you've never heard of that one before. Tetrahexahedron. This one has 24 faces. Good luck drawing that unless you're an artist. And they are all isosceles triangles. The eighth form you need to worry about for this is a trapezohedron. You will recognize when you look at it, it is also composed of 24 shapes, and they all look like Superman logos. All right? Ba, 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 ba. Ba, ba, ba. All right, kind of that kind of shape. Right, that's how I recognize it at least. And Number nine, the last of the closed forms I want you to memorize and be able to identify visually is called a tetrahedron. It's only four faces, and they are all triangles. But they are a special type. They are equilateral triangles. I should have put them. equilateral triangles. The Egyptian pyramids, I believe, are actually all tetrahedrons. Now, before we go away, I'm going to throw up a couple images here for you, I snagged off the internet, of different closed isometric forms. And as we look at these two, oh, here to green, these are the exact same forms, and what they are is they're combinations. So I'm going to say this, and I want you to put under your notes, I want you to say that combinations are common. There can be combinations of open plus open, right? Just many different types of open forms. You can also have closed forms combined with closed forms. So in this example, these are closed plus closed. And the two different forms with, maybe they start with this one over here. This one, if you were to look at this, you would say, oh, that's a cube, right? Pyrite, beautiful, easy. Except for the corners have these little triangles. And if you were to project that little triangle fully into space, it would kind of meet up here, and it would meet with this triangle, and this triangle, and this triangle, and it would actually make a full octahedron. So this whole form right here is a combination form, which is a cube plus octahedron, which might be given the name cubo-octa, cubo-octahedron. Ah, screw it. We'll just say that we call it a cubo-octahedron. Now this shape over here is similarly a cube of octahedron, although it does not look identical to this. Because this example, our first cube of octahedron, what is predominant? Well, the cube predominates. In this one over here, the octahedron, octahedron is predominant. Right? We see the one, two, three, and four, and they're all going to meet up at a point right here. But there are these smaller faces. And if we were to project, actually, you know what we should just do? Count. One, one, two, three, four, 
five, and then down here in the back side, there'd be number six. And a shape with six squares is a cube. So this is a cuboctahedron with the octahedron predominant, which is the exact shape here, even though they look different. This is going to take some practice to recognize, but it happens all the time where shapes combine. Here's an image um, that's the exact same thing. These are both cuboctahedrons, right? We count one, two, three, four, five, six faces that are all squares. That means there must be a cube in this form, and we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight faces that are the octahedron, so a cuboctahedron. All right, we can do the same thing here. Pause and count it up. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's our cube. And then the O's, oh, they gave it away for us, right? The O is our octahedron. There's eight of them. All right, so just be on the lookout in the lab for com combined faces.